Hey guys, so Gordon Ryan seems to be the hot commodity right now. I've been watching a lot of his videos. And there's been a few other videos put out on YouTube approaching or teaching his shin circle type guard passing that he's been doing for the last couple of years. I've been studying it myself and so what I want to do is do a video series breaking down basically the system that Gordon's been taking with the approach from this one position that he likes to work himself into and how he ties the stuff together to use this style of guard passing at the highest level. So the first pass that we're going to look at is his shin circle guard pass and we're going to take a look at the position first and conceptually go over what we're doing with both of the legs. The position that he passes from, I'm going to show you guys how to enter into this position once we've gone through the video series and showed you what you can do from here. But I am stepping over top of this leg and I'm jamming it up by sinking my hips down on top of it and I have my right leg checking close up to the hip or upwards driving into the back of his knee pit here, controlling this leg. What I'm, we're first gonna talk about is this leg uh, that we're pinning down to the bottom with the knee staple. What I'm looking to do, the best case scenario, is staple my knee all the way down to the mat to completely pin his leg. The goal of this is to turn our opponent's hips away from us. If I'm beside Kevin here looking to start cutting even like a, a knee cut, if he's turned into me right now, I can absolutely pass still, but it's going to be a pain in the ass because now I'm dealing with both his legs, his proper frames, both his arms, his chest, and his hips are pointing towards me. He's very strong. If I can have Kevin's hips turned away from me, then theoretically, there's not really much for me to deal with. I'm starting to get behind my opponent, and that's always the best place that we can be when we're fighting somebody. So what we're looking at doing is accessing the leg, so a lever to the hip, so we have lever-based rotational control so as I push it down, Kevin's hips fall. This is how stuff like the wrecking ball pass works, the leg drag. As we access that lever to the hip, turning our opponent's hips away from us, it makes it much easier to pass our opponent's guard. So the more I can staple down with this leg, driving over top and dropping down onto my knee, I have now maximized the rotational potential of my opponent. Big things here is making sure that I'm keeping my toes curled so that when I have active base with the ground, live toes, because I'm constantly going to be driving into Kevin. Kevin's not going to be letting me just rest on him. He might be pushing me back here. If I'm dead toes, I'm not going to have meaningful base and I'm not going to be able to generate force into my opponent. I also want to make sure that Kevin can't kick his leg through. If I go dead toes here, Kevin can now kick his left leg through. And now you can just pull him right into a standard ash or single leg X guard. And we're gonna have to start dealing with a strong guard that I'm gonna have to pass, or I'm also looking at leg entanglements. So some of you guys had asked about how do I pass a leg locker? This is this whole passing series that I'm gonna be going over that Gordon Ryan does, this can be part of it. We can't always drop our knee down to the mat, whether it's gonna be our opponent having really strong structure, keeping like knee elbow connection so they're not letting me base my knee on the ground or just by the height difference of your opponent. I'm six foot five, so I'm gonna be able to do this to basically everybody. But if you're much shorter and you're going up against someone who's potentially six foot five, you might have a hard time actually managing to get down low enough to drop that knee. Gordon often is actually doing this with his foot planted in base and just making sure that he's floating his hips, keeping his hips heavy on this leg and just driving that knee slightly forward. Once again, if I stand back and I have my knee way too clear here, there's a hole that gets created. And then Kevin can circle the leg in, and I'm gonna be dealing with a single leg X. So if we're stepping in here and I can't drive all the way down, I can still float within this position, trying to keep my knee tucked in a bit. So here, rather than completely open, 
tucking it in, eliminating that space that if Kevin's trying to bring his leg back on the inside, I can block it here. And that's where we're going to be able to start chaining the different kind of styles of passes together. So now we understand what we're doing with the leg that we're stapling down to the mat. Now we need to know how to deal with this butterfly hook. As I'm floating in this position, we are floating our hips in this position. If you watch uh, a lot of the videos, the videos in which Gary Tonnen is coaching Gordon Ryan, you constantly hear Gary in the background yelling to float the hips. Gordon's not staying back like this. He has his hands posted on the mat well above his opponent's shoulders so that he's able to float the hips up high. From here, what I need to do is I need to shut down this hook. What most people are gonna be doing is keeping their knee straight up, creating a frame that's able to support my weight like this. So it's Kevin's knee is straight up and down because my hips are straight up above his. He is able to suspend my weight just off of this frame. If his knee dips to the side, it will start to get activated as a lever and we're gonna have responses for that. He also doesn't want to open it up too much to the outside because now he's starting to extend his hips out too much and he's breaking his own alignment in his hips by extending outside the natural range of their motion. He's going to come weak and that's where we're going to be able to start chaining other passes. So a good person is going to keep strong knee elbow connection and they're going to be keeping their knee straight up and down with the hook activated. Kevin's looking to have the instep of his foot activated down into the back of my knee as much as possible. This is going to be accessing a lever to my hip and it's going to be making it hard for me to react to this. My goal is to float my hips up high and slide further and further up his leg. If he doesn't have any knee elbow connection here, I could potentially just float and start going straight into mount or into a three quarter mount, but that's not going to happen against anybody good. Kevin's going to keep this knee elbow connection and what I'm going to do is I'm going to float my hips basing off the mat here with my feet to tilt my hips forward and that's going to sink my hips further down putting more pressure on them and it's going to create more space now that I can bring this foot up and hook. My goal is to hook my instep to his instep so I'm accessing redirecting his leg into a lever now. Another thing I can do from here if he's keeping this really tight is I'm going to look to start redirecting his leg cross. So like as I said, he needs his knee straight up and down as a frame. If it starts to get redirected this way, it's going to collapse. As I start taking my knee and turning it inwards and redirecting his leg, he's going to look to start pushing his leg back out. And as he does that, his leg naturally extends and it's going to give me a little hurt to catch on to. So here he's keeping his knee nice and tight. It's hard for me to Get this, I look to redirect, drive my knee in, shifting my hips to the side. As he pushes out, I redirect and I catch. Once I've caught this, now we're in a position that we can start looking to effectively pass.